People have been hiking the Appalachian Trail since it was established in 1937. However, it wasn't until 1948 when this guy, Earl Schaefer, was able to hike the entire 2,000-plus mile trail in a single year. People at the time didn't think that was humanly possible. Earl was a 29-year-old World War II veteran who had just completed a tour in the South Pacific where he was a radar equipment technician. And when he was asked why he was hiking the trail, he says, I'm doing it to walk the war out of my system. Now, for much of my professional career, I was, as Andrew said, I was with the Department of State and the Department of Defense and deployed, like many of you here, to Iraq and Afghanistan. I spent four years in Iraq uh, through a few tours and then went on and did six years in Afghanistan, off and on. It was an experience, and my, my primary job there was advising various U.S. commanders as they came and went. It was a job that allowed me to engage with presidents and prime ministers, numerous warlords and insurgents, and go on countless missions and patrols with grunts, Iraqi police, Afghan commandos. It was a job that I loved and hated every day, but it's one that I'll be immensely proud of for the rest of my life. So when I finished up my last tour in Afghanistan in 2016, and then stepped away from government shortly thereafter, I had heard about the Appalachian Trail, and I looked in it a little bit more, and I had time since I had stepped away from government I fortunately still had my health, and I had saved up a bit of money. The modern AT runs 2,200 miles. Most people start down in Georgia at Springer Mountain and go through 14 states, finish up at Mount Katahdin in Maine. And when I started, I didn't know whether it would be 100 miles or 1,000 miles. I had no idea. But what I did was I just focused on doing three- to five-day hikes, getting to a town, resupplying, resting up, taking a shower, eating some real food, and doing it over and over and over again until I worked my way up north. In five months, I was able to summit Mount Katahdin on Labor Day weekend, 2016. It was a good day. And I pretty much kept hiking since then. Uh, I've, I've hiked, again, more than 15,000 miles all over the world. And when people ask me why I do it, it's not to hike the war out of my system, although that's a perfectly good reason, and thousands of people have followed in Earl Schaefer's footsteps doing just that. Instead, for me, it's about the simplicity of it all. It's about the repetition. In many ways, you're just doing walking meditation for miles and miles. It's about the exploration. It's about the challenges, the physical and mental challenges. In many ways, the best days are the hardest days. Those are the days that you always remember, you always look back on. And this may sound like an ideal life for many people, but believe me, there's nothing pretty about that. <laughs> that was me when I completed the Continental Divide Trail, the CDT, in 2020. And the CDT is a trail that runs about 2,800 miles. It starts on the border with Mexico, going through New Mexico, into Colorado and San Juan Mountains, into Wyoming, through the Wind River Range, which is one of my favorite places in the whole world, along the border with Idaho, into Montana through the Bob Marshall Wilderness and finishing up in Glacier National Park on the border with Canada. And this was in 2020, and since COVID was going on, there weren't many people there, and I think I maybe came across only 12 other hikers the entire five months, five plus months that I did it. There were days for eight, nine, just one 10 day stretch where I didn't see a single person. For me, that's my bliss. But I also fully recognize that that's not for most people, pretty much everyone. But if you are interested in having, uh, doing an expedition like that, or even just one for a few weeks or a few days, I'd like to use the remaining part of my time today just to give you some very practical recommendations that may help you make that decision so that you too can go out and enjoy the outdoors. Pretty much... When I, when I left Afghanistan, I started thinking about 
things that impact us. And there, I've learned that there are three primary factors that impact all of us in different ways throughout our lives. And those are primarily health, time, and money. And as you can tell, I'm someone who greatly enjoys outdoor experiences. And I've been doing them pretty much my entire life. When I was younger, I used to do BMX racing and then mountain bike racing. I used to do downhill skiing dozens of times a year and even got into high altitude mountain climbing a little while. But, you know, the things in life kind of impact you. And it's those three primary things that do. I mean, and you just aren't able to do the things that you like to do the older you get. Because what I could do in my 20s, I couldn't do in my 30s or 40s. And I'm 51 today. Because when we're 20 to 30, you know, you might have a lot of time and, and your health hopefully is decent, but you just don't have as much money. When you're in your 30s to 60s, you got a decent amount of money and hopefully a decent amount of health. But time is, is, is precious, particularly married and have kids. But then when you get 61, you got more time. Hopefully you've saved up some money. But health is always the big question mark. And while I've been living this sort of lifestyle, thinking these things through, there's a fantastic book that I came across, Die With Zero by Bill Perkins, that takes the same sort of principles and analyzes them in a way that I found to be incredibly constructive. And what he says is that it's better to spend your time with loved ones and family while you can and have those and, and build up a wealth of experiences with them and then die with zero money in the bank account. Now, that's a bit extreme and meant to do so just to kind of get you thinking. But if these are the sort of issues that you are also thinking through, I highly recommend Bill's book. It really helped me kind of think through things. It'll be one of those books that I'll read probably a number of years, read every few years and, and learn something new from. Now, you guys might be thinking, well, do you have a job? What do you do for money? And all this other stuff. And those are good questions. And when, since I left government, I but pretty much in the consulting work. But when I came across this piece of kit, an Iridium Go, it allowed me to have the backcountry become my office, for better or for worse. And in this case, for better. Because it allows me, it, the Iridium Go is, is a satellite hotspot, and I Bluetooth into my phone, allows me to send and receive emails, make phone calls reasonably well, and then also be able to send and receive texts. And it, Size of two decks of playing cards, weighs a little bit over half a pound, and it costs between five and $600, but you get them for cheaper on, on eBay. And the data plans are somewhere between 75 and 150 bucks. And that's a lot of money, but it's also my freedom. And I complement it with a keyboard that I just Bluetooth into my phone, and it allows me to stay in touch with my, my clients when I'm in the, in the back country, and then I'm able to kind of talk to them more when I'm back in town. Now, I can't like send PowerPoints or send photos or things like that, but there's a new version that kind of came out and you're able to do that. Now, I just also want to make a point, I'm not sponsored by any of the companies I'm mentioning here. I'm not sponsored by anybody. These are just things that I've used and I just want to share them with you because these, are hopeful, these may be some issues that you're thinking about. Now, when I'm asked what sort of trail you should hike, um, and I recognize that most people don't have time for 1,000 or 2,000 miles, trail. I always recommend the Colorado Trail. Fantastic. Probably one of the best hikes in the entire world. It runs 480 miles from Denver to Durango and is something that you can do pretty much between four and six weeks. Now, if that's too long, which is perfectly reasonable, they've also divided up to like 25 sections. So you're able to go and hike those sections. I have some friends that do it over every few years and are able to knock it out. Now, however, if you have like seven days to two weeks, I highly recommend that center part there. It's the collegiate, the, the collegiate peak wilderness. It's about 160 miles. It goes to the heart of the Colorado Rockies. And it's the most dense concentration of 14ers in the continental, in the continental 48. 14ers are 14,000 meter peaks. The trail goes no lower than 8,000 feet and goes generally, I think, about 12,000. But there's also a lot of ways to kind of go off so you can do the 14ers if you wish to. Now, some of you might think, okay, that's all well and good, but 
the best trail usually is the one that's right in your own backyard or wherever you happen to be. And I found some apps that you might already know. With this crowd, I'm sure you guys know about all trails, which is fantastic. It's got thousands of trails in its database all over the world. And no matter where you are, you can find a good trail that's nearby. And what makes it great is that you can search for them based upon distance, uh, difficulty level, loops, straight, whatever you want. It's all right there, and you can download them for offline use. So when you're back on the trail, you don't have cell service, you can still use them. I made that mistake once by not, not doing that, and I, I won't do that again. And what's also great is that you're also able to get to the trailheads for, to it, which is, which is fantastic. What I do now a lot of times is I do thank you treks, where I go and I meet with friends that I hadn't seen in a while or former colleagues or mentors of mine who are getting older and, and go and meet with them and to thank them for the impact that they had on my life. And then if they're physically able to then go and do a hike with them, I always am able to find something that's near them with this, with this app. The second one is far out. And this is for people who want to do one of the long trails, the CT, the CDT, PCT, whatever, but also all over the world. And it's, it's a fantastic asset that not only is able to help with, with hiking, but also to be able to help with, with bike packing, if that's, what you're, if that's what you're into. And it's something that's got these waypoints where you're able to get water conditions, trail conditions, towns, phone numbers, people to call, and all this other stuff. And it's an incredibly helpful asset, not only when you're hiking, but also planning. Now, you can easily over plan if you're going to be doing one of these hikes, but I strongly recommend not to because you want to be adaptable and things will always go wrong. And that's part of the fun if you're into that sort of thing. Now, no talk about hiking wouldn't be complete without a little bit of gear. And my favorite piece of gear, hands down, literally and figuratively, are pacer poles. Now you might be thinking, all right, great, yeah, hiking poles, fantastic. Um, no, these poles are fundamentally different because of the handles. And it's amazing just being able to have an ergonomic shift that you can put your weight into, that it fundamentally alters how you hike. And it saved me thousands of times, literally, let alone being able to take weight off knees, ankles, hips, particularly going downhill, which in my opinion is a bit harder. And it's something that there's a small little company based in the UK, you won't find them on Amazon or an REI, they're just there, and I just stumbled across them. And I wish I was able to use them back in my 20s. My body would be in a lot better shape now. There's also some companies that are just boutique companies that focus on long distance trekking that make very light but durable, durable gear like tents and backpacks and sleeping bags and things like that. The first one, Z-Pax. Z-Pax is actually a Florida company that's based in West Melbourne, maybe about two hours south of here. And they make, make for example, like a, back, a sleeping bag that's a two-person one for myself and my kid, kit would fit in there, or two people, two smaller people. And it weighs maybe about a pound. And they have a backpack that's like a 60-liter backpack that's light. Probably be great for rucking too. That's maybe a little bit over a pound, maybe a pound, pound and a quarter. And I keep mentioning these weights because you're mindful of weights when you do these long hikes. You don't want to kind of overly burden yourself. And my base weight, which is all my equipment, usually is about 15 pounds. And it varies based upon the trail you're doing and the time of year. But that's the way how that, that is with them. And there's catabatic gear as well, and they make down products. Down products like... Like, like puffy jackets and also sleeping bags. And so one of their quilts is like a 30 degree bag and it's something that I use um, three seasons and it weighs just like a little bit over a pound. And this is just all durable things that I've used for thousands of miles that I thought I'd just relay to you. The final thing is Audible. Everyone knows what Audible is. And I came across it when I was doing the AT for the first time. I thought, ah, I'll listen to some books. And I hadn't been able to listen to really much things recreationally since I was just consumed with work the whole time. And before I knew it, I listened to 76 audiobooks when I hiked the Appalachian Trail. And I loved it. I mean, not only was the hike uh, a physical exploration, it was also a mental one where I'm able to kind of go and, and, and learn different things. And I've listened to hundreds of books more. Now, you're not able to retain as much, maybe 75% for me. You get better in, in time as you do it. And you... You, you, you learn to adapt and you take it. Now, I'm just going to talk very quickly about two books 
that I retained 100% of that I hopefully inspire you. The first one is Grandma Gatewood's Walk. Now you're like, all right, Grandma, that's fantastic. Grandma Gatewood is a badass. She was a 68-year-old woman in Ohio. And after the last of her 11 kids left the house, and she divorced her abusive husband. This is in 1955. She told a handful of kids, not all of them, and a few friends, that she was going for a walk. She didn't say where, she didn't say how long. And she literally put a bag over her shoulder, not a backpack, just a bag over her shoulder. And 146 days later, she completed the AT. This is in 1955. She was the first woman to hike the whole AT, and she'd do it two more times in her life. She is an incredibly strong woman in more ways than one, and the story is phenomenal. The last book that I absolutely love is Touching the Void by Joe Simpson. Now, this is a mountain climbing book. It's not a hiking one. And it's written by Joe Simpson. And what it talks about, and what Joe writes, is about an expedition that he and his climbing partner, Simon Yates, did in 1985, where they attempted to climb the west face of the Sula Grande in the Peruvian Andes. And no one had climbed the mountain that way before. And I'm not giving anything away by saying, yep, they were able to climb it, and they were able to summit. But getting to a summit only means that you've gotten halfway. You still got to get down. And on the way down, that's the hardest part, and Joe breaks his leg. And I'll stop there. And it's a endeavor that I often think back on whenever I'm having a tough day and I'm just trying to push out a few more miles or just do exert myself a little bit more. I'm like, and it just puts in perspective that if Joe's able to kind of push through a broken mountain on top of the, a broken leg on top of the mountain, I can do this thing as well. The book was turned into a movie, also called Touching the Void. It's a documentary where Joe and Simon talk about their thing and there's reenactments with some actors and it is the best outdoor film I have ever seen. It's on YouTube, someone uploaded, you can download and watch the whole thing, and it's phenomenal. Let me end on this one. This is Earl Schaefer in 1998. He went to hike the AT again, to commemorate the 50th anniversary of his initial hike back so many years ago. And he was able to complete it two weeks from his 80th birthday. So maybe age shouldn't stop us from enjoying our next adventure. I'm about out of time. If you'd like to connect, that would be great. Just so you know, I'm not on any social media. I'm, I have no Twitter or Instagram account. Instead, just come up to me and say hi. It'd be great to talk with you. Thank you for your time.